Okay, everybody, welcome back. Hope you rested in those five minutes. Uh, just to make sure we all have everybody's here, give me again your favorite emoji. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I have Martine here. Martine, thank you so much for being here with us and helping our students with probably their first films for many of them. Um, we can start with uh, just a short introduction about yourself, how you started in the industry. Oh, sure. Um, well, let's see, I, I am a producer, director, DP, writer and editor. So I, I started out as a guerrilla filmmaker and I just, uh, just kind of learned everything. <laughs> and, I, and I thought I would start specializing, but it seems that I just keep doing everything. Not, not in every production, but I, I'm still doing all those roles. So um, yeah, and I love them all. Awesome. Can you share with us how you got started, like your first project? Uh, my first project, I, I lived in a building in um, New York. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's called the squat. I don't know if you're familiar with squat. So um, in New York, they have a system where people um, in the eighties, when there are a lot of buildings that um, were in bad uh, states, um, people would move in and they do the work on the building and they would end up being able to live there. And it's actually legal. So I, I made, um, but some of the squats were getting kicked out by the police and by the city. So I made a, a socio-political horror film with my friends in my building on 16 millimeter film um, to talk about uh, squatting. And, and uh, it, it was like kind of a fun take on, on uh, getting evicted. It was called Ellie Victor. And uh, that's how I started. And um, I guess I also, I, I grew up with a lot of photographers, so it was natural to have images around me all the time. And uh, I grew up with my mom um, back in the day when film had to be developed in a dark room. So she developed her, uh, her film in our bathroom. So I was always um, banging on the door trying to get in to use the bathroom. <laughs> and she was always <laughs> developing some kind of pictures in there. So, uh, so yeah, it was always around. That is so awesome. Um, can you tell us um, what you wish someone would have told you when you just started out? Um, yeah, I guess I, what, I, what I see with a lot of student films, um, some points that I, I thought would be good for them to know is um, uh, background actors are really important. And I, I see a lot of student films that don't use background actors. Um, and also to mix ages up. A lot of students will make films with their friends, um, but it's more realistic, of course, when you bring different ages into it, you bring some older folks into it, um, have people play their real ages as much as possible, and, you know, unless, unless it's a comedy. Um, and uh, yeah, those are two of the big ones. I had some other ones I can't, but you know, sound of course is super important to record it. Uh, decently um, and yeah those are those are three things that that I see a lot in student films that you know if, if they um, mm -hmm. once they progress, they'd move beyond this but uh, those are three things that I see awesome what do you what do you see like a big kind of mistake that I want to say newbies make um, well those three things that mm -hmm. I meant um, Let's see, uh, light, you know, lighting, like shooting. Another thing is shooting outside. Like uh, it's best not to shoot, um, you know, try not to shoot like in the middle of the day outside because the lighting is really what, what we call toppy, right? So you'll get, you know, everything will be very broadly lit and you'll get a lot of, uh, you know, direct sunlight, which you try to avoid. It's best to try to shoot, you know, if you're shooting outside, try to shoot in the morning or in, you know, later afternoon so that the, the lighting is more, you know, um, diagonal, more slanted, more pleasing. Mm -hmm. so, so try to watch, uh, you know, try to watch where the sun is. Um, try not to light people directly in the face with the sun. You know, a lot of uh, 
try to turn them so that the sun's hitting the back of their head so that it's not you know directly in their face because that that tends to look quite amateur mm -hmm. awesome well to move to something else can you share uh how it was like filming uh your comedies how what it was like yeah like your your experience about it or tell tell us about uh the process that you you did like the process that you make well what a really good thing to do with comedies is to let the actors improvise mm -hmm. right because often what they come up with is even better than what you've written right and so uh something that i worked with kathy jones and she told me that um there's a director called mike clattenberg he did trailer park boys and um he he said to her once he said let's just do a take that's wild and crazy just like off the wall wild and crazy and it was the one that ended up they it was when they ended up using in this hour is 22 minutes right so so try you know try to do a take that's even like bigger than you ever thought or you know funner or crazier um and sometimes that's the one that actually gets used mm -hmm. um let's see i have a question here for you uh when producing uh, my first short, The Runner's Fate, I had a lot of difficulty trying to find insp inspiring and nice shots. Any tips on getting shots that are clean and beautiful with limited technology? What would you say? Um, well, I would say it's something that I find really interesting in shots is when you capture foreground as well as background, right? So we call that shooting dirty, right? So so you can... you. Sh you can shoot something clean. So if you shoot something clean, you won't have anything in the foreground. It's just the, you know, your subject and then the background, right? But if you can, um, let's see if I have something, I have a few. So this yeah, is my, go ahead. Just brought that. So if you had something there and something else here, just at the bottom of your shot or at the sides, it, you know, it kind of, I mean, these are bad examples <laughs> of, of objects that would be in it, but like, what well, it's what we call shooting through something, right? So you, it gives you more depth. It gives you more, um, there's more of interest in your picture. You know, there's, there's, there's more for the eye to see and um, it, it's just a more interesting shot to me. So, so that's something that you can do to make shots more interesting. Um, try to get depth of field. Um, I don't, I guess um, what depth of field is, is it, it replicates. So the camera replicates what the eye sees, right? So if you focus on your hand, you, the background goes blurry, right? And so that's, that's what you want to achieve in some of your shots is, is um, to have the background blurry. So you want a shallow depth of field. That's called a shallow depth of field. And when the background is not blurry, when you can see you know, all the way into the background, that's called a deep depth of field, right? So, so you want some of your shots, like if you have a close up of something, you want the background to be blurry, generally speaking, unless you're going for some crazy effect where the subject's out of focus, right? So, so you wanna, if you can find a camera that actually allows you to capture depth of field, you're gonna get better shots. <laughs> Okay, thank so, you for that. Sometimes we're starting to do that. You can you can actually, you know, there's there's settings on your on newer cell phones where you can actually get depth of field. Um, uh, and you can use you can actually get um, cell phones, you can actually get small mics for cell phones. So you can actually, you know, there's been feature film shot on cell phones as long as as you you know stay aware of trying to capture depth of field and trying to you know, get good sound by using a mic that's separate from the actual camera. Mm -hmm. But I, I wonder for you, do you think them, the students working, I mean, I'm sure many of them will shoot, uh, uh, you know, with, with their phones even. Um, what do you think they should be focusing on bringing into their films um, so to make them, I guess their stories more powerful because they're working with limited technology? What would you say? Uh, I say it, it starts with the writing. It all starts with the writing. You, you, you know, it's really hard if you don't, if you, like they say, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage, right? So, so you want your film to have a theme. It should be about something, generally speaking, right? So, so, you know, you want to make a comment on something. You want to 
have um, something that's what your film is about, right? So, so that's, it, and it should have a beginning, middle and end. And the character should have some kind of arc, generally speaking. So something should happen that shifts their focus or their view slightly, you know, it can be slight. Um, you know, so there are films that don't have an arc, a character arc, but generally speaking, if you want to have a good film, the they sh character should, you know, you know, have some kind of shift in some way in the film, right? So that, that to me, and then of course, great acting is, is you know, working with your actors, um, even if they're friends and family, um, you know, trying to get them um, realistic as much as possible. Is, is generally the way to go. Sometimes, you know, in comedy, sometimes performances can be heightened um, mm -hmm. if that's what you're going for. But, but you know, still, I think the best comedies at their core um, have sort of real elements, you know, the, the character is feeling something real, even if they, the situation is heightened. And uh, what is your process to coming up with those ideas? How do you bring them into your writings? Oh, how do I bring them? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I try to go with an idea that hasn't been done to death. So, so of course you want something kind of original or an original take on, you know, something that if it's been done to death, like zombies, zombies mm -hmm. have been done to death, right? So if you're going to do a zombie movie, you really want to at this point do some, you know, have an original take on it. Maybe, you know, I don't know, ballet dancing zombies or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you want you want an original take on it. So yeah, I tried to go with something or, you know, an original idea and also um, have, have something, you know, have the theme, some, a theme that resonates with, me and my life and what I'm, you know, what I've gone through or what I'm going through. Or I wonder what? how much of yourself do you bring to your films? Uh, a lot, mm. a lot, especially when you're directing, you, you tend to call on what you've experienced and, and, and directing is one of the, the hardest parts of filmmaking is how to get a performance out of an actor. You know that so 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 you, you can draw on personal experience and and you know that that sometimes you know helps the actor if you can tell them a quick story on set sometimes um, or or you know it's always brought back to your own experience so it's it's uh, so so much of it is is personal mm -hmm. making. I wonder how you do that because you do wear a lot of hats. I mean, writing, producing, directing. How do you do that? And do you have them all at once or like do you change between the roles? How do you do that? Well, I'm making a show right now and it actually, I, I there, you don't do them all at once, but um, it, the show is kind of me do, me and my husband doing all the roles. So we are doing <laughs> all wow. of them. Um, and and I, when when it is a production like that where you are doing all the you know all the pretty much all the roles, um, it, it's really good to have consultants, especially mm -hmm. when you edit, so that you you have people like always take people's advice. That's another thing on set. Like always listen to other people, and you know it's uh, film is so collaborative that mm -hmm. it's really important to have other people's insights and voices on set, right? And especially in the edit, you have to um, set, you know, send your film off to people whom you trust and you think have a good idea of, of films. Sometimes, you know, maybe somebody with a bit more experience to give you feedback and then take that feedback <laughs> and make your, your film better. You know, that's, that's so important is to get, and, and test screenings, you can, you can show your film to your friends and family and have a Q and A afterward and ask them if they, they understood what your film's about and, you know, did they like it? Is there anything that didn't resonate with them or anything that felt fake? You know, that's, that's really important to do as mm -hmm. well. And, and how do you balance that? I mean, with taking critique, but also not losing yourself I guess if your intuition tells you I should put this, but others like are not getting it, what would you say? 
Um, take, take your ego out. Mm -hmm. So never be too proud to, to listen. I think you, you've got to listen to everything. And then, but then sometimes they're not right. Sometimes, sometimes, um, you are, you know, your vision, your vision always trumps, right? So you can always make your, your final decisions. Um, once you get a range of opinion, um, but don't, don't, um, ever, you know, do it on the basis of ego, um, thinking, well, I know, and this is my film and I know what's right. You know, uh, li always listen to people. But if you really feel that, that they're, advice isn't right for in the end you got to do what feels right in your gut so you know you, you know you got you got to stay humble always you know no matter what i think it's important and um and always listen to people and then and then go with your gut in the end <laughs> yeah awesome let's see if i have some questions for you uh jennifer asks what kind of mic would you recommend to use with the cell phone I don't know specifically. Um, I usually work on production of the sound person, uh, but but that's the thing about gear, about equipment, is you really have to research um, and 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 watch reviews on YouTube. Because I just bought a piece of gear just the other day, and I didn't watch any reviews. I just had to buy it in a hurry, and I'm sorry now, and I'm probably going to have to send it back. So. <laughs> So watch reviews on YouTube because they, they almost every piece of gear will have reviews, um, either on YouTube or just Google it. And um, yeah, I, I I can't say specifically for cell phones because I don't I don't work with mics. I don't work with cell phones um, unless it's like specifically a, a shot in a film that has to be a cell phone. Um, but there's there's lots of great mics out there for cell phones and there's yeah it's it's amazing what you can do with a cell phone these days and and I hear they're getting better and better and better so never underestimate a cell phone <laughs> for sure and take up as a question do you have any advice for okay this one I don't know incorporating SFX makeup smoothly in your short uh, incorporating, incorporating special effects, makeup, special effects. Um, mm -hmm. um, I guess make sure it looks real on camera. And if it doesn't look real, pull, pull the shot back. So it's not too tight on, on, on the special effects or, you know, just, you know, if it doesn't look super real, um, you know, have it go by, go by quickly or, you know, or, or don't get too close on it, right? So, so if generally with cameras these days, you know, the 4K cameras, lots of cell phones are 4,000, like, you know, high resolution, 4,000 lines of resolution. Um, so they can generally see what your eyes see. So if it looks fake to you, then, um, you know, don't, don't, you know, find a way to creatively don't show it as much, right? So pull back or have it, you know, have it go by in a blur or something like that. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, can you share with us kind of challenge you face and how you moved past it? A challenge I face, let's see. Oh, there's so many, film is always challenging. Oh. Always, always at every step. I think first of all, casting is really important. And, and you know, it, it's really challenging, especially when you get further on in film to, you know, um, you, have, you, you kind of have to make sure you want to work with certain, you know, people, your actors, make sure they're, they're, you're able to work with them, that, that, you know, you have a good relationship with them as much as you can. Um, one good, really good piece of advice, I think, is when you're auditioning actors, if you have them reading from a text from your script, always give them an adjustment, right? So an adjustment is give them some direction, get them to change it up, right? Um, you know, uh, you can tell them something like, I'd like you to um, imagine that you're really mad at this character or, you know, uh, something like that, you know? And um, see if they if they can't change their performance, do not cast them, because if they can't change their performance, 
they're, they're, you won't get anything different. They, you can't work with them. They're not going to be malleable, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's the key is that they can, they can take direction. If they can't take direction, I, my suggestion is, my big suggestion is do not cast them. Um, and, nice. and then if like, you try to stay like water. You know how water flows around an object? Mm -hmm. That's what I try to do with actors who are challenging. I try to be as pleasant as possible and, and still get them to do what I'd like them to do <laughs> by being pleasant and, and being water. And just like, you know, if, if, you know, if they're going to be a rock in the middle of the stream, you just like, you can like change direction yourself in, and, and still be really nice so that you don't create too much tension on set, you know, because it's always hard on set anyway, you're always battling with time and money. Right, so you're always you never have enough time to shoot what you want to have what you want to shoot almost ever, and there's never enough money to do what you want to do properly, right? So and time is money, right? The more money, the more time you have, the you know when you have everybody on set, every minute is money. So um, so you just you want to find a way to get the actors, you know, to, to get where you need them to go and get what you the performance you need out of them. Um, without um, too much, you know, screaming on set. You don't want any of that. <laughs> yeah, awesome question. That's like a really cool tip. It's like a pro tip, absolutely. Um, let's see, Colin asks, uh, as someone who wants to be an actor and a filmmaker, since you have done both, what is your preferred role? Oh, I don't act. I'm a, I'm in my show right now. That's the other thing in this show. We my husband and I have this show, and we're the we're the characters in it. It's a reality show, and we're the crew because we were on a sailboat. So, <laughs> so I don't I don't act though normally, but um, people do all the time. Lots of actors are are also directors, and they direct themselves. Um, I think what they do is they um, watch. They'll they'll watch at least one of the takes, right? So, so you act and then go behind the camera and make sure you watch it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, some people don't, even professionals, they don't do that. And then, and then they are disappointed with their own performance. So if, if you watch it, at least you, you can see, oh, okay, you know, I, I need to change that a little bit. You know, I need to adjust myself there. Um, but if, but if you, you know, and build time into your day to be able to watch the replay of, of your performance so that you, you can see what, what you're doing because, because, you know, it, it's, it's challenging. Like I said, there's, it's really, you're always going to be battling time, right? So make sure that you, you build time in to watch your performance so that, that you're not going off the rails or you're not too subtle, um, that you, you can adjust yourself. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to working on tight de deadlines, for example, how do you set your priorities? Uh, well, sometimes you, you're setting them at the moment, right? Like so many times during the day, you run out of time. Like, you know, there, there's always stuff comes up in a day, right? So you have to know which shots you can lose. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really important thing, right? So, so even on my shot list, when I'm planning my shot list, I know I can lose this shot, this shot, this shot, and be prepared to lose them. Be prepared to condense stuff. You know, you have to be really flexible on set because stuff will come up, technical things will come up. That's nobody's fault. Uh, and, and then you have to be really flexible because weather can happen. Um, you know, all kinds of things can go wrong and they always do, you know, somebody can get sick and just leave and all of a sudden you're missing your main character. <laughs> So you have to always be really flexible and 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 think, okay, how can I how can I still get what I want and make sure you're getting the emotional core of your scene. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you get that, you know, if, if you know you're going to have to lose shots, don't let that be the last one that you shoot, you know, make sure that you get the core the most important shots first, and then you can lose whatever you know that isn't, you know. Mm -hmm. is it gonna um, mess up your, your scene or your movie if you don't get it. Awesome. Um, okay, we have another question for you. What's, what's one of the best ways to build tension? Mm. Oh, on set? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Probably not. <laughs> well, the actors, they always they have objectives, right? So that's what you always want. You're seeing you want opposing object objectives, right? So so if basically one character needs to go and the other character that that's what you give as direction like you want to make your you want to make your boyfriend stay you'll say to the to the one actor right and then you'll say to the act, other actor you're late for this thing and you really have to go right so that's an objective right so that those are opposing objectives and and the actors will and really good actors will take those and and milk those right <laughs> So, so yeah, you always want to have, you know, you always, you need tension in it almost, pretty much almost every scene to make um, the piece compelling. You always have to have these opposing objectives always, right? So it's always one character wants something, there's always obstacles from other characters. Mm -hmm. What would you say, I mean, when you look at a story, what kind of things that jump out of you that you say, okay, that is a really good story? Oh, that's a good question. Um, if, if I can identify with it, I guess, if it, mm. if it feels true and authentic and it resonates with me, or it's super, uh, super original and funny, but if it's it, still, if it's funny, it, it really still needs, an emotional core at, at the center of it to to make it resonate with people. So something that 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 speaks to you deep inside, you know, like oh I understand that. Oh my God, I've been through that. You know that kind of thing, right? So so you know it's something that that connects with your with your emotions. Something that that resonates that connects with you. And universal, you know, a universal. Um, it, it has like a, uni a universal core, a universal truth, meaning that most of us have been there. We can mm -hmm. that. That's like one of the key things. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Martine, for being with us this half hour. Oh, you gave us so many good insights and like really good practical tips. And well, uh, to finish up, do you have any last comments for our students? Um, have fun have fun, you know, uh, just go out, make stuff. Um, your first films can be embarrassing. Screen <laughs> <laughs> them anyway, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and then you get better and better the more you make stuff. And so don't worry about your, I have so many embarrassing films. Don't worry about them, move on and, and just, you know, keep, keep creating, keep growing, keep making them better. Amazing. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you, yes, and, and um, see you guys. <laughs> yeah, you'll see you see their their films, and we can't wait to see what they will do. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Have fun, guys. Bye. Thank you.